So this is factored form. This is called factored form. There's going to be questions on the test that says put this polynomial in factored form. And I, lo and behold, every time I have someone in it raise their hand and say, what does factored form mean? And they've done all the homeworks. And they've done really well in class. And they've already done questions like numbers one and two. And then they get to this question and it's what's factored form. But they can't put it together that you've already done that five times already. Because you know how you do a test and you do something once, you're thinking, oh, well, I'm glad that's over with. And you move on. On these, you do the same thing over and over and over again. So it's kind of like you get sucked in and thinking, I don't do that for this one because I've already done that. So the, the good part about this is it's already in factored form, which means that if you were to graph it, where do you know it hits the x-axis? Four. And positive three. So if I put a four in, I get zero. If I put a negative five in, I get zero. If I put a three in, I get zero. So here's three and four and negative five, right? Now, we want to know where what what values is less than zero, basically. Where is it that this polynomial is less than zero? Not equal to zero, but where is it less than zero? So what that means is uh, what numbers could you plug in and get an answer uh, less than zero? And what's what's less than zero? Negative. Any kind of negative number. And uh, does everybody agree that if you plug a number in, you get an output? Okay, and what are all the outputs supposed to be? They're all supposed to be less than zero. So, of domain and range, which one is the outputs? Which one's the outputs between domain and range? Range, that's right. It's range. So, where is the range negative? Where is it below the x axis? Where is the graph of this below the x-axis, basically? So this question is asking you, where is the graph below the x-axis? Where are What's the outputs that are below zero? You can graph it if you want, just how it looks, and look at it. Or you can pick test points. I suggest you pick test points. So here's your options. This graph can either come in from the top, right? Mm -hmm. So it can come in from the top, or it can come in from the bottom, right? So let's figure out which way it comes in. We're going to use test points. Mm -hmm. So what's a number that's outside here, like out through here? You want to use negative 6. Okay, so plug negative 6 into x here, here, and here. See what you get. So let's plug negative 6 in. Negative 6 minus 4 times negative 6 plus 5 times 3 minus a negative 6. What are you guys getting? 90. Way up here, right? 90 is way up here positive 90. So that means that the graph comes in from the top. If you go out here and pick negative 7, you're going to get a positive number. If you pick negative 8, you're going to get a positive number. So now, here's your options now. Does the graph go through 5 and under, or does it just bounce off the x-axis and go back up again and come back down through this? So how do you think we could figure that out without a graphing calculator? Test point, we'll figure out what you get, right? So you want to use negative 4? So plug in negative 4.
what do you get? Negative? It's negative, right? That's the main thing. It's negative. So that means what? It goes down through here. Well, it doesn't come back up again for air until over here at 3. So I don't know what it looks like, but I know it does this kind of number. So from here to here, any value you pick, you get a negative answer. It's underneath the x-axis. So your answer for this would at least be, would I use a bracket or would I use a parentheses? Parentheses, because there's no bar there. So parentheses, negative 5, comma, 3. Parentheses. Now, does it go through 3 or does it bounce off and come back under? You reckon it goes through like this? We'll pick a number between 3 and 4 and see what, what's the number between 3 and 4. 3.5. That's right. 3.5. That's another stupid question I've asked today, isn't it? <laughs> and what am I going to do with 3.5? Plug her back in. Now, it, I'm not really concerned what the number is. I'm just concerned of whether it's positive or negative. Positive, positive number? Because that'd be negative, and that'd be positive, and that'd be negative. Two negatives make a positive. So it's going to be a positive answer. So the thing comes back up, and it comes back down. Now, does it go through, or does it bounce off? Do it. You reckon it goes under? How can we make sure? Plug it in, plug it in. Which number you want to plug in? You use five? Yeah. You sound very enthusiastic when you Sure. <laughs> Is it negative? So it goes under. And it's, you know there's three intercepts because there's three factors, so this thing never comes back up for air. It just keeps on going down and down and down. And there wasn't any other x-intercepts this way because there's, we already got those three plotted. So it doesn't matter what other number you pick, you're always going to get negative now. So skip, start back up at 4, go on to positive infinity. So we just move up there with final to just show all that we're Yeah. Yeah.